river runs into Loch Ness and out again. So it kind of divides Ulster into two parts. And even today, east of the Ben is very Protestant, very Anglo, very pro-British, and west of the Ben is almost totally Catholic and traditionally Irish. So west of the Ben, uh, the Ban is still a very powerful uh, dividing line. Okay, so you could go on forever. You know, I, I would love to go into those little things. I mean, I love reading about them, but it's not terribly appropriate for me to come down here and start talking about little it's about stuff like that because people get bored very quickly. About, well, you don't. Obviously, you get buried deep. People like the broader strokes. Do you have a follow-up question, or does anybody else have, have a question? I, John. I just got a uh, gift from my daughter. Uh, it's called The History of Ireland by Seamus McManus. Oh, yeah. Do you know him? Oh, everybody, yeah. Everybody, that's the first book every American. All the, yeah. There it is. There it is. <coughs> that's the primer. Very good historian. Excellent, yes. Very good. Excellent. A must read. And it's, it covers a, a, the, the, the wide range. It's one of the, it, it was, he was Irish, but he, um, he, he wrote it mostly here in America, and he wrote it for an American audience. He was very Irish. I talked to, actually, Larry Crawford, I think it was. Was it, it was Larry Crawford, who told me that he traveled back with him on a ship. You know, they used to go backwards and forwards. And he, went back, he, he was traveled back with him on a ship back to England, back to Ireland. Seamus yeah. Man. Seamus Man, yeah. He's, uh, He's from Donegal. Don't wasn't it? I don't know. I passed through his little town a dozen yeah. times. Very, very pretty place. So he probably lived until the 50s, I think. I think it would have been about the 50s or so that... Because um, in those days, well, um, uh, what's the name? was living on the East Coast. But anyway, yeah, absolute must read. Great book. Wonderful book. Recommended. He, uh, he spells his name M-A-C. Is, is that a Scottish or Irish... Uh, well, it's Irish. Well, it's I Mark and son. Prefix. <coughs> they both <coughs> they both mean the same thing. Yeah. But, but, it, but the Scottish tends to go. Uh, well, the, the Irish, you know, it's it's that's. I, I don't pay any attention to. He's the, an Irishman. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I really don't pay any attention to the difference. The really, it's it's that's a an apocryphal notion, I think. Mm -hmm. The Mac and the. We were taught in school that the Mac was Scottish. Yeah, was an MC. Irish. I don't think so. Uh, it's they're very interchangeable. I don't see any real solid basis for that. No, I, I don't really. Um, it may be when the English came in, maybe they did. They used that to differentiate. I don't know, but it certainly wouldn't have any significance in the, in an Irish sense or in a Scottish sense. They were but Mac. My husband can usually tell from the second part of the name whether they're Irish or Scottish. Yeah, that's probably true. Um, <clears throat> The M I would be correct Gaelic. Yeah. yeah. But somewhere along the line. Well, yeah. It, it, probably the other way around because the, the Scots were very cheap so that they would probably cut out the A. And <laughs> no, it's the other way around. It probably would be, yeah. It'd save a letter. What? It isn't it lies we're telling. So, unless anybody has any other question, Shinne. Shinne Fina Fall is right. So thank you very much, folks, and uh, hope you come back. We're delighted to have you, Miss Carl. I said we're delighted to have you here tonight. We hope.